Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed the series so far. The next thing we're going to talk about is improv improvisation and composing, which at this point, if you've watched up to the last video um, on the basics of advanced theory, that if you've spent the time to really understand well what I've tried to elaborate upon so far, you should have a pretty good understanding of a whole lot of the basic concepts that are happening in Western music and that you've got a pretty good understanding of how to move around in the fretboard, what's all involved in the basics of theory and the basic building blocks happening there. And you've come to some point also probably of at least where you want to start in your journey of becoming the guitarist and musician that you are going to develop into. So along that process, that um, addressing the people who are going to be on the side that they are going to be doing improvisations and do com and doing composing that at this point that you're basically going to want to try to utilize these things that we've talked about and you are trying to understand what's the best way to do that so these two things can be intercorrelated and mixed together also because if you're improvising you may be improvising to somebody else's tracks or backing tracks or you may be composing the backing tracks yourself, coming up with rhythms and or drum tracks and things like that to improvise too, to practice different types of articulations, licks and runs that you're working on, practicing your scales and modes, how you move around on the fretboard. So that is a very simple concept to understand. And by now, if you've taken the time to understand the things we've talked about well so far, that the next step as far as improvising and composing that up till this point I've really been trying to keep everything so unclinical and untechnical and a lot a lot of collegiate jargon so that it's accessible to all levels so that everybody that picks up a guitar can understand what I'm talking about and it doesn't scare them like they're just at they're at Juilliard with some professor trying to teach them you know they're going to be on, you know, on a journey to a master's degree in music that that they are, I you know I do not you know dissuade them from that but I'm trying to make this accessible to all levels and keep it as simple as possible so that the concepts are very attainable to all peoples that want to play music and guitar and compose and improvise and whatever they want to do with the guitar and their music so continuing along with that type of thought is that the co improvising and composing it's very simple that when you're improvising if you are going to we'll address you know com we'll address just improvising to other other people's backing tracks there's all kinds of places you can get backing tracks and we've talked about all the things that you all, all, all the basic tools that you need to do that that you're talking about using different modes playing in different modes making sure that you resolve and you're playing on top of the chord we've talked a lot about passing tones and the importance of starting somewhere that is consonant and resolving in the process are the some of the biggest tools that you need to understand and we've talked about other things of scale overlays and all kinds of things like that where you're improvising and when you're dealing with melodies and melody improvising leads and things like that then it basically is going to boil down to that time is working on your articulations the library of articulations that you want to use that you gravitate to and the type of licks you use so at this point you really are going to want to start collecting some licks I don't really gravitate towards teaching people lick factory because they will start to incorporate what types of licks are really important to them and the type of music that they like and that can be very determinative um, or I should say that can determine you know what types of licks they actually use and the type of music they're playing when they're improvising but that's a lot of what you're practicing moving around on the fretboard and how you move around on the fretboard your type of style and your technique your the articulations you like to use the type of licks that you like to use and it's a time just to be free there's no mistakes there that's time for you to just use the tools that we've talked about to think about them thoroughly while you are playing along 
and actually utilizing them. And it's that simple. Don't get it any more complicated in your head than that. And, you know, it's not right or wrong. It's time for you to experiment. Improvisation. It's time for you to experiment and, and, and get comfortable with moving around the fretboard with certain types of progressions underneath you. And I really do advise that at first you keep the progressions very simple. That, you know, you're standing on a G, that the, the, your backing tracks behind there are standing on the G for a while, then standing on the D, then standing on the C. You know, to have you let you have some time to work with them. Trying to stay away from backing tracks and, or creating backing tracks that move along really fast, that the chord progressions move along real fast because you're not very fast yet, you know, and you, it's going to take time for you to get real fluent to be able to catch those changes on the fly moving along real fast. So don't keep them very simple. That one that I did on um, resolving lead lines, no, guitar lesson number nine, I just did it in D, I think, you know, just, you know, playing over and over again and, and practice running around on that. So try to keep the progressions very simple and practice all the things that I talked about there, your articulations, the type of licks you want to do. Start putting a lick factory together because it's going to very be very um, important in your compositions also. I mean, I've got probably about, to be honest with you, I've probably got about maybe 80 licks, you know, that are licks, that are short phrases that I use to link together with other phrases while I'm moving around the fretboard that are very, that I use a lot, that I will utilize them a lot. And they're basically my lick factory. And it's not that big, but they're the basic licks and runs that I use to move around on the fretboard and then I start creating other different things from time to time while I'm experimenting, when I'm improvising, or I'll write something that's not a normal lick and run that I use. But I've got a lick factory of about 80 um, or more, not that many, that I that are fundamental in my improvisations to, you know, that are go-to, you know, just on the fly that I don't have to think about too much that I you can utilize at any time that I get at a loss for letting me experiment around trying something else. <laughs> and the same thing with composing because you get really good at those ones <clears throat> by utilizing them so that's a very simple concept it's just time for you to use the things we talked about and to just experiment and have fun <clears throat> move around you know on the fretboard and if we come into creating your imp own improvisation rhythm sections get a basic drum track you know, get a cheap DAW or whatever, you know, I mean, so, at least some type of DAW that you can put drum tracks on there, some bass tracks underneath you, and try to keep it simple as possible at first. And as you develop, as you develop and you start to understand I'm moving around on the fretboard and, and making things consonant as you start a, a melody line or as you resolve a melody line as the rhythm section is moving around, you can make it more and more advanced the more fluent you get. So don't be in any hurry to create some really extravagant, you know, some really extravagant, you know, underlaying progression and rhythm section underneath that you've created for your improvisations to practice on. Try to keep them simple. And that way that you can really have time to practice, you know, let's say that you really want to practice improvising over an A ninth. You know, like an open A ninth or something. Don't be in such a hurry to try to move it to something else, some other chord in the progression. That way you can really practice, you know, playing around on it and seeing what really sounds good there and, and, and really working on licks and runs and articulations, you know, over that chord and with the rhythm section going. Um, it'll sink in a lot better. Does that make sense? And as you get better, you know, obviously that your uh, the things that you improvise to will get more complicated as you start trying to push yourself. But don't be in any hurry for that because it can cause you frustration. Whereas if you sat there and improvised over like that well, on Guitar Lesson 9 over D and just practice improvising over that, resolving back to D, starting something that's starting out a melody line and che checking out passing tones over that chord, then you'd be have a lot more fun that way as you start to add more chords in your progressions of things you're improvising to that it's you're more fluently moving from one chord underlayment to another chord that's underlayment and have a lot better idea how to resolve back into what's underneath what you're trying to improvise to and that's a very simple concept to get through your head and to help you a lot 
that way that when you get improvising with some group of people that you know you've got a good understanding to that you'll work better with other people and you'll have a lot more fun and you will improve a lot more so improvisation can be a lot like that and it's very simple and it basically is just time for you to practice the things we talked about and don't make it any more than that and just try to have fun and really work on what sounds good to you does that make sense? Your time to experiment and expand and, and perfect your style and technique with the types of licks and runs and, and, and techniques and, and articulations that you really like and are shooting for at this point in your progression as a guitarist and musician. Try to keep it that simple and try to keep things you're working on simple so that as you're practicing that you're not trying to practice, you know, improvising these really super, art, you know, um, complicated things. Try to work on simple things, even like I said with the simple progression underneath it, and perfect the simple things first. Let it progress. Don't be in such a big hurry to be, you know, playing like Ingve Malmsteen or, you know, Joe Satriani or Eddie Van Halen all over the place all the dang time, you know, or whatever, just our Paco de Lucia or something, you know, and it's like, or Andrea Segovia, you know, and it's like, Take your time, you know, perfect the simple things so that what you play may be simple as you progress. It'll get more complicated as time goes by, but the things you do do sound good and are performed well. Does that make sense? So try to keep it that simple when you start out with that kind of stuff and just let it progress. The next thing we want to talk about is composition. Composition can be a really hard one. The first rule of composition is that there really are no rules. Okay, if you look at all the different type of genres and musical forms throughout history, that every rule that's ever been created has been broken. And it just has, you know, and that's sometimes has been looked upon as innovation and sometimes it has not. So and that is in the eye of the beholder, obviously, right? So keep that in mind. But... Also keep in mind, there's a very old saying with music is that, I'll give you an example with the pop culture, like pop music, you know, nowadays it's getting kind of, it, sometimes it's kind of hard to apply it to some, but it used to be very, very, very accurate. It's saying that the public really wanted to hear certain types of progressions, and when they didn't hear certain types of progressions and transitions, it didn't sound consonant to them, and so they didn't like it, because they were so used to hearing it on the radio over and over and over and over again. So anytime you're dealing with any type of musical form or genre, that can be very important, and the listener will definitely gravitate towards you or away from you if they don't hear those kind of things happening. It's just like you trying to play heavy metal kind of stuff on top of reggae. They're not going to listen to it. That's an extreme example, but basically that's what it works out to. Uh, that they're not hearing what they're normally used to hearing in that type of genre, in that musical form. So keep that in mind whenever you're composing. The second thing is that when you're composing, two things are going to happen. The first rule of thumb is that you can do come about this two ways. The first way is that you just start noodling around, whether you're with your strumming or melody lines or whatever, and you're not worried about being any type of key or anything. You're just noodling around, messing around until something like just snatches, you know, and you get this catchy little thing going on, and all of a sudden it starts, you know, taking off. That's one way. I, I've made a lot of compositions like that. The other way is to be a little bit more clinical about it, and I don't dissuade you from this even when you're noodling around, is to start in some type of key. I mean, some some scale and some key, and what, have that as your starting point, as your foundation, like say you're playing in G major, that you have, very, have written down on a piece of paper that you are starting in G major. You're starting with either one of the major or minor fundamental um, chords of the intervals, in the key of G major and you're starting from it. You may wander out of it because a lot of times you you will more than likely and you but it's a place to come back to so that you have a place of resolve to come back into. And utilize the things you're talking about. You know, it's like there's so many different types of strumming patterns, the way to strum the guitar for the rhythm sections, finger picking, um things like um, counterpoint, you know, I mean, there's lots of different tools for composing and you really need to just sit down and work, first of all, on 
if we're talking about rhythm sections, you know, what type of rhythm is under it? What is the timing of it? What kind of timing you're working from? I mean, you would mostly, most definitely probably want to start out with a basic 4-4 four, four at first. You know, even 3-4 can be more difficult for beginner beginning players. And worry about that progression. Experiment with the other timing signatures as you get better. So worry about that the basic timing of what's going on and start with basic chord progressions. You know, don't worry so much about, you know, as you get more advanced, um, I found that a lot of times that I don't do that because I've got a certain type of strumming pattern or kind of way that I'm playing and I start noodling around with that rather than just trying to find a chord progression. But that's a different approach. But a lot of times you just trying to get a chord progression happening there to where you start trying to feel out, trying to set a chord progression in time and space. So many bars, so many beats, and what chords are coming after each other. That's one way to do it. It's a very simple approach. Then you can work on different type of ways of finger picking that, strumming that, articulating those chords as you change them, and things like that. And just work at it like that and work at it one section at a time. One movement, we talked about movements and transitions. In Guitar Lesson 14, we were talking about um, the transition concept and we touched upon the movement transition concept. So you might want to go back over and look at that and try to really set out, you know, that progression and that for a set amount of time and then work on the next progression movement or the next transition moving to the next movement and make it that simple make trying to work out that chord progression you know starting with that basic key and letting it take you wherever you want using the tools that we've talked about in the lessons that we've talked about so far and after you've worked that out how you're going to articulate those chords now that's one way to move around to get you started the other way is sometimes that i let's say that i'm playing something that does a lot of you know um you know things like um some other type of picking pattern or some other type of that it's not as much it is cordial movement but there's almost a cross between cordial movement and melody so that's a whole nother composing aspect that a lot of times on the guitar a guitarist will be playing not just cordial movements like we talked about but they'll be composing with a combination of melody lines and cordial movements to where they might strum a chord or hit a harmony that's a, a found a part of a triad or a chord or anything like that and they're actually walking around or doing some melody movement you know of single notes that are leading them around that concept can get very complicated but to try to keep it that simple that it basically is a combination of using that cordial progression one chord after another chord and combining it with with some type of melody line it's like if i go it's like if i hit i mean a real simple example is like i hit a g duh, and then it's going to last like four beats for one bar and it goes i let it hold it two beats and then i go da na 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 da then i go to a minor in g and then I do something on that for two beats, and then I do some da 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 da, you know, or, or I do any type of thing like that. That's basically a com combining the cordial movement and melody lines. Because when I did that, that G is still the foundation under it, but that transition kind of thing isn't really looked upon about as a transition per se between two different movements you know, like between a verse and a chorus, it's more of a transition between chords. So you're utilizing notes, maybe little licks and runs to get you from one chord to the next inside of a movement that's basically transitioning you from one chord in the progression to the next in the movement. And I try to keep that concept very simple because that can get very elaborate and very complicated. If you listen to a lot of guitarists, you can hear that happening a lot to where that it sounds like there's the guy's not really playing chords underneath it he's moving around all over the place there's a pattern to what's going on there and sometimes it repeats sometimes it doesn't but he's combining those two things that he's basically combining that cordial movement with melody line movement 
you know, as he goes. Like that G is supposed to be four beats before it goes to A for four beats. And he's done, he's held it for two beats, done some little finger picking on it or strum thing or da 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 da, whatever. And then he's done some kind of little lick or something. Why not die into the A that is combining the mel some type of melody thing with the cordial movement. And I try to keep it that simple in your head so that concept doesn't get real complicated. So that it just sinks in that it basically is a combination of that. So that you're listening to something and you're going, well, he's hitting that F and then he's coming up to G, but he's doing this other thing before he hits G, before the bass player follows him to G. Does that make sense? Or the bass player could be playing a harmony to G. Does that make sense? That that's another concept in the composition when you're messing around on the guitar so really keep that in mind what one of those things are happening and when that's happening that you see that and that that is a huge tool when you're composing so and i really suggest at first that as you're composing trying to keep it simple trying to start out in some key do you some type of cordial progression you know that might last one chord for four but four beats one chord for four beats one chord for four beats one chord for four beats and try to just work on that how you're articulating that chord or strumming that chord and then work yourself up to more complicated things that are happening complicated movements and complicated transitions into other movements <coughs> and take your time you know so you're really comfortable with them and perform them well and that the other part that i talked about that has been a huge block that i've seen a lot of guitarists run into because they will sit there and they'll say they're going to start composing. So they start going G, 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 F, 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 D, D, D. And they're going, this is boring, bro. I do not sound like, like, you know, Eddie Van Halen, Steve Vai. You know, and it's like, you know, when you're DV Ray Vaughn or something. You know, and they get it in their head that why isn't that happening? And that's a key element in that, that between those cordial movements, they're incorporating some kind of melody thing or something in between there. So that that, like I said, that G might be, be the foundation for four beats in one bar, but they're doing, you know, hitting it, fucking hitting G, da, 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 and then da, 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 going to A minor in G, and, you know, then doing some other little thing that, you know, that combines it together. Or they might start in it. Here's another concept that they might hit G and the foundation is supposed to be G, but they might hit the bass players holding G for four beats, right? And before it goes to A minor. So, or to A. And, you know, the guitarist goes G, da 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 A, da 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 You know, that kind of a thing. That's kind of moving around and it's transitioning between those chords in that movement you know those aren't transitions moving to another movement those are transitions and moving from one chord to the other one foundational chord to the other in the composition or in that that movement because songs are set up most of the time is this movement this movement this movement this movement this transition this movement this movement on and on like that so that's a very simple concept to get in your head and they're not trying to give any type of any type of example of that in any way shape or form because i don't want to confuse you it, throughout history that you know what forms are acceptable what types of genres what types of things might be considered you know consonant in those genres that i don't want you to give examples thinking that's the way it's supposed to be because that might be okay for reggae but not really good for heavy metal bro does our jazz or something like that you know some jazz can get really complicated they're they're moving all over the place shit happening all over the place and unless you really can understand what's happening there it can really look like a mess to you and you just get really frustrated because you're not understanding what all is happening there but that's basically what is happening just in a more complex way as you may create more and more complex music the other concept is to understand is that complexity now complexity is here is an example i love movie theater scores movie scores kind of stuff but they can be very complicated i've created some movie scores that you know i can it can go for an hour two hours you know and i go all these different changes you know that it'll be like going from you know going from heavy metal to jazz stuff to country kind of stuff to light and you know and lilting to really heavy to kind of somewhere in the middle to uh, all kinds of stuff going on and different sound effects and all kinds of things in movie compositions it can be the same way when you're composing the complexity there 
So be real careful of that and start out simple. Try to make things as simple as possible. And, you know, as you progress from that G, 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 A, 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 F, 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 you know, whatever you're doing there, understand the tools that we talked about and the concept we just discussed and start trying to incorporate them a little bit. Does that make sense? Incorporate the idea of, you know, transitions between those chords uh, and as you go to create a, the next movement or possibly a transition between that those movements, you know, and actually it's its own composition transitioning to the next movement or modulation or um, cordial mixture, or modal mixture, and really pay attention to that and take your time with it. Start out with real simple things and understand that things like the rhythm section pay really close attention to that that you're following whatever rhythm section you've created when you're composing and with your bass lines and things like that really pay attention that the bass line whatever it's doing is consonant with what you're doing try to keep the bass line really simple following the cordial progression until you get worked out what you guitarist as a guitarist going to do because you are a guitarist so you that's going to want you're going to more likely want that to be a focal point unless you're in player in some type of music where the guitar isn't the focal point the piano might be the focal point or the bass may be the focal point the beat might be the bass the focal point if you're playing dance stuff so you know figure out where your space is where what is your job in that composition are you supposed to stand out and be like eddie van halen everybody's everybody's face or joe satron or is it that type of music or are you supposed to be laid back in the background being you know phil are you supposed to be adding body to the composition and and having your own place there rather than being out in front know what you're composing like that where is your place in that composition you know are you the most important instrument in there or are you not are you supposed to be laying in the back and you are you know you're supposed to be blending with the pianist or the synthesizer and the bass player and the drummer and everything else and what's taking presence presence in your comp composition is it they're going to be the rhythm section the beat you know it's some kind of dance thing you know and where's your space in there you're not supposed to be taking over the beat bro it's that's just that simple that's not your job your job is to fill and you know and create music behind there a musical background for that beat so your place not not be out as in front as say the rhythm the drum the bass and the synthesizer you may be back there a little bit and in country you may not be you're pretty forefront but you may it's not as aggressive because they really want to focus on it might not be as out front and a lot of genres like that, reggae and things like that, you're more of a rhythm section behind there rather than out in somebody's face. So your progressions and your compositions don't have to be as complicated. And when you're composing, if you go, this is basic composition. We're talking about rock, pop, reggae, you know, any type of genre, any type of genre or form like that. When you cross into jazz and classical music, those kind of things, you really want to pay attention to form. That means you really want to lay out what your fo your movements and your transitions are very well la laid out and they resolve, you know, as you move along and be very, you know, very keen to paying attention to that and what you're doing using the tools that we've talked about in the videos that I put up here so far. And the next thing besides that in your composition is that I found that once you understand those type of things and you get comfortable with that idea and it's not a bunch of clinical jargon to scare you away from it is to is the next biggest concept is does it sound consonant to you you know does it sound consonant to you first of all now that can be intercorrelated well does it sound consonant to that genre so i mean sometimes you know some alternative musics that can be cool but if you're trying to play top 40 pop music or top 40 rock or if you're really trying to fit in this niche of reggae that you going off the wall into outer space ain't gonna work bro they're not bringing you to their reggae club bro i mean you're just not gonna get in there very likely because they you're like some kind of alien you're not really reggae bro you does that make sense so really pay attention to that if that's what you're trying to do and if you're not what sounds consonant to you does that make sense? And when you're doing that, those two things are kind of intercorrelated. You really got to pay attention to, is it consonant with that genre or musical form? And is it sound consonant to, and good to me and the group I'm working with? And that's very important. Sometimes those two things can be very hard to correlate. But a lot of times those are what 
people look at as innovation when things start to change and things get added you know you got country rap song you know what the hell happened there you know does that make sense hank williams going whoa bro what is that you know or it's mixed with rock rap and reggae you know what it what is that you know and it's like because they started experimenting messing around but you know you can be guaranteed if you showed up at a hank williams concert as the opening act you i don't know that you know they would all like you they may i don't know they might not because that just does not sound like country bro you know so you really have to keep that in mind what you're shooting for and besides that you know really just experiment have fun and ask questions you know it's like you know ask ask you know people that are composing people that you have heard some songs and don't be afraid to say hey bro you know i'm creating this little rhythm thing and i'm trying to compose this thing and this is what i'm doing and i'm trying to articulate it like this way i'm trying to move here i'm trying to transition like that this movement's gonna last so long this da 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 you know what do you think about that i mean ask why out like that don't be shy about it you know you might you might ask 20 different people and get 20 different answers of feedback or where they think might want to go because of what might sound consonant to them or what they think would sound cool to them and so you can get all kinds of huge amounts of artistic feedback to help you go whoa Bob was right there that is so cool and Randy wow that was a really great idea don't be afraid to ask that because those are huge resources because they're trying to do the same thing, bro. I mean, it's like everybody didn't wake up Bach and Beethoven, you know, and it's like they, they're experimenting and having fun too and running into building blocks and stumbling over hurdles and all kinds of things, you know, bouncing around on one leg down the runway, you know, with one arm flopping, you know, and it's like, and you know, they, it's, it's a, there's a community there and there, it's really important for you to understand that in that artistic community, musicians in the composition improv improvisation community that most of them are very they're beyond willing to help you they want to tell you how they see things and how what they think you know and it's like because they're very proud about their progression and how they've moved forward and every stumbling block they've gotten over and every hurdle they've managed to fly over without killing themselves that they're very proud of it and it's you know took a lot of hours of them experimenting stumbling around and, and trying to work on things and they want to share with you you know they just do the artistic community can be very that mu much that way so do not be be afraid and be real careful when you run into people who are stumbling around that you don't fall into things that just really ain't good for you to work on because you know that doesn't sound cool i mean and and ask you know it's like when you see a doctor you ask three or four doctors ask a lot of people the more people you ask and the more feedback you get very directly that the better chances you're going to incorporate in cool new things into your compositions and your improvisations and because you will get immersed into a much broader area so that you can say okay well i like this type of articulations in my rhythms this type of strumming but i ask around and i start getting all this feedback even something simple like that all of a sudden it just like opens up all kinds of worlds because you might ask you might even ask a hundred people on your guitar group or something like that that you know can really give you and be very very direct you know what do you think dude what do you have any input on that how could i change that how could i do that different da, 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 da. it's growing that way that it really helps you that they've already stumbled across a lot of those things and some of them are in the process of stumbling over them so you might help each other and that's a huge thing because you get that thing going back and forth and it can really help you when you get real comfortable with your improvisations and compositions that you'll find you'll do that less and less and less because you'll get more comfortable with what you're doing and going away from that and more focusing on what's up here and what you want to do and really contemplating about it but in the process of getting there that that's a huge tool once you understand that it will really help you get to that spot to you really comfortable with what you're doing and then every now and then you really might want to do that but a lot of times you won't you'll have a pretty good idea of what the process is and how to get it started every now and then you might run into writer's block and things like that and that's a good time to get in contact with other musicians in a group and really just bat things around you know what the heck can i do there what do you think of that da, 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 da. you know skype with people you know chat with people you know talk with people get online with them facetime with them whatever and talk with them 
or go talk to take a good time go talk to a music teacher you know that you know that's local or online and spend a couple bucks you know for a lesson you know and say I'm really you know kind of getting stuck here uh, you know what do you think I should do there what da, 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 da. that can be a huge tool also to help you be real careful about hearing about how this is the way you're supposed to compose you know because if you look at how many musical forms have happened on this planet that that was that is not true so you know and the, there's all kinds of ways different ways to see how you're supposed to compose but having an understanding of the concepts we've talked about how to get started on that and what tools that you have to work with are the basic building blocks for you to start flapping your dang wings and seeing and running around on the one runway until you can get flying doing something bro you know and it's that simple and i know it sounds funny like you albatross flopping around or on the one way but that's how you eventually going to take flight bro i mean one of those i mean it might take you 500 yards like an albatross but eventually your butt's going to get flying so you know to start flapping those dang wings bro you know and i know that sounds funny but but I don't mean to make a joke about it, but I mean, it's very true. So get flapping those wings and run around on the runway trying to get flight. Eventually you will. You've got all those huge resources to fall back on and take advantage of them. Come back and watch these videos that I've that I've put on here. And you could PM me and talk to me. And you've got tons of resources on the internet to talk to people. All kinds of guitar groups, music groups that you can ask about things that are happening, and really just work on that. You know, and that's basically about where I want to leave you as far as when you're composing leads and stuff like that. That as you move around that you basically you know you want to be in key or working over a cordial structure that's underlying the more complicated you make the cordial structure underneath the melody that you're writing the more complicated and harder it is going to be to develop a melody over it sometimes you might develop a melody first and then you got to figure out what kind of cordial structure to put underneath that that's a very simple concept and I don't want to elaborate on a whole lot, just that's what's happening, you know, and that's where your modes come really in handy. That's where you will, you can come to the understanding of, you know, different modes can lay on top of different types of chords and you can interchange them and mix them and all kinds of things. So be real, you know, be real constant of that. And the last thing I want to talk about is listening so to other types of music. Listen to other music. Listen to the type of genre and the type of music forms that you really are start, you want to compose in the moment and sit down and listen to them. Spend a day, an evening or whatever and really just pound it out. You know, listen to that type of music for a while. Just listen to it. That type of music that you're trying to compose like or that's similar to what you think you want to compose like and listen, 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 listen. Dissect it a little bit. What's he doing there? What's happening there? What kind of chord progression is he doing? What kind of vocals are he doing? What are they? What kind of harmonies are he doing? What kind of choruses are he doing? What kind of leads are they doing? What's happening there? You know, something I want to compose is going to be simple on that. How they do that? We're going to talk in the next video about dissecting some songs, but that's a huge resource. Just listening to it, you'd be surprised how much impact that has on you in your compositions. But be careful of it also, because you might listen to a bunch of Van Halen one night, but you and you all of a sudden you get up and then you start to compose, and you've got this in your head. You want everything to sound like Van Halen, you know? So it's going to be very influential, more than likely on how you compose so be careful that also it can be it can have that effect so those are the tools you got to work with and you've got the musical things that we've talked about in these videos that i put on here so far and the concepts we've talked about and just start flapping around taking flight and after you get flapping around of course you're gonna run into stumbling blocks and hurdles and things like that and ask around ask people you know that are composing in groups and guitar teachers or whoever you might be able to get contact with on the internet or in your community and talk to them about it what you're doing you know what might be happening there and really think about what they're doing that they're trying to tell you be real careful you don't get caught up in a bunch of clinical things or people that are trying to explain 
how to compose that are explaining to you in a way you can't understand or they're not very eloquent about explaining it to you to where you walk away more confused than when you started to ask the question. You know, tell them when you don't understand. You know, and if they don't seem able to explain it to you, walk away from them and ask somebody else that can break it down for you in a simple way to where you can get actual help and walk away with maybe not as much clinical jargon and theoretical knowledge, but you walked away knowing more from somebody who took the time to explain it to you well and simply and elegantly to where you walked away with some knowledge and improved your your understanding of what you're trying to do and got some decent questions about the answers about the questions you were asking. So be very conscious about that. So anyway, I hope that it helps you out a lot that um, I rambled on a long time here, but the, I didn't get real technical. I didn't really pull out any sheet music. I didn't even pull out my guitar because it's just the basic concept of just flapping your wings around with the tools that you have and thinking about the things we've talked about and experiment with them and get an idea of what you want to do and then just start trying to move forward with it and then start asking when you get stuck for help when you need it. Peace, help, love. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.